My name is Gloria Wilhelm, and I'm here today to talk to you about my son, Matt. I'm also here today to ask for your help. I'm not going to ask for money. I'm not going to ask for your time. I won't even ask you to write a paper. I need your help to figure out how to get a message out to people, especially to teens aged 16 to 19. This is Matt at a wedding two years ago. He was supposed to be in his brother's wedding last September. He didn't make it. He died of massive head injuries in intensive care the day before his brother's wedding. Here's a baby picture of Matt. He was curious, active, a happy toddler. Here he is with his two older brothers and his younger sister. Every year at Thanksgiving, we take an updated family picture. This year, I couldn't do it without Matt. Our lives are forever changed. Our family is shattered. I can't ever take a family picture again. Why? Because on a beautiful fall day in September, Matt, who was a recent U of I mechanical engineering grad and just received his master's degree, was riding his bike way off on the side of the road in Urbana. This is something he enjoyed doing during any free time. He had on a helmet, reflectors, he wore bright clothing, and it was daylight. A 19-year-old girl with three very serious driving violations in 17 months was looking down, downloading ringtones on a cell phone. She didn't realize she was totally off the road. Her car was so far off the side of the road, she hit Matt with the driver's side of her car, all because she was completely looking down. Her eyes were not on the road at all. She said, when I looked up, it was too late to stop, so I hit him. We estimate that she was going about 60 miles an hour. She had had one previous driving violation for going between 25 and 30 miles over the speed limit. So with no warning, she hit him. He flipped up in the air. His bicycle flew one way and landed in the opposite oncoming lane. And he flew up over the car the other way and landed headfirst on the pavement. Matt spent six horrible days in intensive care. The doctors did whatever they possibly could to save him. We never left his side. Matt died 3.30 in the morning, the day before his brother's wedding. When Matt died, he took part of my heart with him. The only way I can continue to live with a broken heart is to try to make people realize that the way they currently use cell phones, texting, iPods, while driving, seriously endangers not only their lives, but the lives of totally innocent people like Matt. Everyone thinks it can't happen to them. We never thought it could happen to us either. We had jobs, people were in school, we took family vacations. We're just a perfectly normal family. We aren't trying to take away people's rights, but when people's actions and deliberate decisions endanger totally innocent people like Matt, something needs to change. You can't begin to imagine how painful it is to lose someone to something that's so preventable. I don't want another mom to watch a son or daughter die the way we did without being able to say goodbye. Please help us find a way to reach others. What can we do to convince others, especially those ages 16 to 19, that this is dangerous driving behavior? Text messaging has taken the world by storm. For many teenagers, it's the main way they stay in touch with friends. But a lot of teens admit to text messaging behind the wheel of a car.
Matt Wilhelm had a bright future. Friends and relatives say he was smart, energetic, and well-liked. Matt worked hard on his career as an engineer, but his parents, Gloria and Chuck Wilhelm, say he also put a lot into enjoying life. Hi, I'm Chuck Wilhelm. TV and radio stations throughout the state have provided excellent coverage about Matt's accident and about distracted driving in general. Even on NBC Nightly News, it was discussed by Brian Williams, and it has appeared numerous times on the front pages of the local newspapers and various articles and opinions. Based on the talks we've had with the public, there is a lot of fear and frustration out there and a desire for change. We lost Matt as a son, but society also lost. If you want to know what kind of person Matt was, Matt was a brilliant creative engineer. He was one of those unique individuals who could think out of the box. But he volunteered and he shared his gifts. He tutored kids in math and science, but he also went out on wilderness camp trips. He went whitewater rafting and spelunking and rock climbing. And he loved biking and hiking. And of course, ever since he was a little kid, he loved soccer. He was a compassionate people person. He was always uh, meeting with friends, had numerous friends. We are asking people to stop dangerous driving behavior now before it is too late. We don't want you to have to say to a parent, I'm sorry I killed your son or daughter. I didn't realize what I was doing was so dangerous. So we'd ask that you voluntarily change your attitude, change your behaviors, and drive now and talk later because it only takes a second to create an eternal heartbreak. Some of you may have heard of a tragic accident this past summer in New York where five teenage girls were killed. It can only be called a grief beyond words. These were five close friends. They were pretty and popular with high school behind them and their futures right ahead. And then in an instant, they were gone. It was 2.30 in the morning when one of the moms received a call that no mother should ever have to take. A police officer said, ma'am, please come to the front door. And she said, no, please don't make me come to the door because I know it's not good news. And he said, we really need to see you. She found out that her only daughter had been killed in a tragic accident. This fateful trip started out a few hours before with a text message organizing five high school friends to go visit a lakeside cottage. Authorities believe there was text messaging just seconds before the crash. The SUV the girls were riding in exploded and burst into flames 50 feet high. All five girls were killed instantly. Their friends behind this vehicle saw this accident and will forever have to live with this vivid image in their mind. The friends saw the SUV pass a van and go into their lane again, and then suddenly, without any explanation, veering into the oncoming traffic when the accident occurred. There was another similar case, uh, an 18-year-old driver out in Ohio. Patrick Sims was his name. And uh, he was text messaging while he was driving down a highway and riding with his girlfriend. And he didn't actually see the accident, but he heard his girlfriend scream. And as he looked up, he remembered seeing the final impact. And he killed a father of two who was out biking. And he has to live that, with that to this day. In order to try and recover from that, he is going out and discussing and meeting with people talking to them about how they may change their behaviors. In Illinois, the Secretary of State's office has also decided to um, attack this problem, and they are issuing a brochure that it deals with the dangers of distracted driving, talks about what distracted driving is, and how to prevent those cases. In Matt's case, the driver was only charged with improper lane usage, which is a petty offense. A petty offense, as most of you know, would be like getting a traffic ticket for speeding or missing a stop sign. And improper lane usage is very similar. When I went to the state's attorney's office, though, 
she said her hands were tied. It wasn't quite to the level of a felony, which is willful and wanton, and there was nothing between that and a petty offense. There was no misdemeanor charge for negligent vehicular homicide. That is something that is in 35 other states, and Illinois is trying to get that passed. Um, when we talked to the congressman, Representative Black said that the laws have just not kept pace with technology. When these laws were put in place that we have, you did not have interactive technology in vehicles. So we went to, the, went to Springfield, and we spoke with the Senate, and we spoke with the House of Representatives. It passed the House almost unanimously, but in the Senate, it got held up. We are planning on going back to Springfield this next year to try and pass the law once again. Within the group trying to change these laws, we have what we call Matt's Law Coalition, which is approximately 200 people. We have a pamphlet, which you see here, and it is a pamphlet which tells about the whole story of Matt's accident. It has some interesting stats on it. It indicates in the backside of the pamphlet that 80% of the crashes involve some form of driver attention. And even more importantly, the use of hands-free cell phones have just as much impact as drunk driving. Right now we're asking you to please help us protect totally innocent people like Matt, who are victims of a multitasking society whose priorities are selfishly out of order. No one can drive with their eyes off the road. A car can be like a loaded weapon. What can you do? You can speak up if you're in a car and someone is texting or talking on a cell phone. If you're in a car, pull over if you need to make a phone call or let the answering machine get it. You can sign a pledge that's available on our website. Please talk to any parents or adults about their cell phone behavior. We also have some websites listed, matslaw.org, crashprevention.org, keepthedrive.com, and the NHTSA. Finally, Matt was robbed and we were robbed. We can never look in his eyes and say we love you or goodbye. He was in a coma until the day he died, the day before his brother's wedding. He will never have a chance for his own wedding. We'll never see his kids. He was great with kids. He'll never have his own. All because someone was looking down instead of keeping her eyes on the road and her mind on driving. We have nightmares of Matt's last moments when he was riding way off on the side of the road on a clear, beautiful day and was hit with absolutely no warning. A person who saw the accident told me this was no scene any mother should ever have to witness. All for a cell phone ringtone. Nothing in the world can be worse than watching my son die before my very eyes.